The first time your characters meet, it's a beautiful scene. Time stands still. Has that ever happened to you in real life before? Love at first sight. Love at first sight. Not in the, in the form that it's happened in this movie. I don't think I've had that level of magic. I don't know. I, I fall in love with things all the time. Sometimes I'm frozen in a moment and 15 minutes can pass. And, if, and I'm, suddenly someone's knocking on my door and it's like, what are you doing? And I've been caught up in something. And, I mean, this, it's such a small moment, but we get to kind of it's examine so it. It's It's very powerful and it's very cool. And, and Michael, like his portrayal of it and the way that he kind of captures it is really unique. And it's funny because it was actually a scene that like, I remember when I first met with, with, um, with Michael Gracie, he had it painted out, like he had a painting, storyboard of that. Kind, yeah, yeah, of that very moment, and and the not painting, just any storyboard. Though. Yeah, it was like, it's, and I just remember being like, ah, oh, that's such a beautiful moment. That yeah. slow mo swing and that meet for the first time. So I remember like being super excited to shoot that because I was like, I want it to live up to this painting. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah, it was it was a fun one. Yeah. Do you have a freaky talent? A freaky talent? Yeah, because I got one. I'll show. Oh, you what one. do you have? I can bark like a dog. Like a really good one, like a real yeah. one? Yeah, sometimes okay. they reply, but really? then I don't know what they're saying, and then it goes on for a while. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can, you, can you do anything like that? Um, I can't. I, I attempt to bark back at my dog, because I feel like he's talking back, and I'm like, okay. well, I'm going to talk back to you, and what you may understand, but it doesn't work. <clears throat> Actually, that's really good. That is a <laughs> really good. What kind of dog do you have? I have, um, it's a half poodle, half chocolate, Poodle, toy poodle. I was gonna say, that was, that, yeah. you, you definitely really got that on lock. Yeah, the, 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 the yeah, that was good. That's like one, an apartment neighbor dog. Yeah, it's very <laughs> that. Really noisy ones this morning, yeah, yeah. right? That's very okay. good. Okay, Zach and Zendaya, you'll get to build your dream circus. So I'll give you two options. You get to choose one over the other. Okay. Like okay. Sims? Cool. Yeah, I like that. Sims. I love okay. the Sims. I freaking love that game. Uh, me too. I play that, that shit okay. for hours. You ready? Okay, <laughs> Lady Gaga or a Pikachu that speaks English. Pikachu only says Pika Pika, right? This right, part. so the new movie that, the, that's the coming movie, out. Like, <laughs> he speaks English and it weirded everybody out. Yeah. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So you oh, can have that in your circus. I think I'll take Pikachu because that's kind of crazy. Did it weird everyone out in a good way? No. No, not in a good way. Oh, then Lady yeah. Gaga. I don't know, pick Lady, what, what would you pick? I don't know. I think Pikachu's Pikachu speed is. It's pretty. I, the 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 level that people responded to it. Yeah. Mm, was he like super intelligent? No, it's just like oh, it was just weird. You. I want to be yeah, with you. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's like <laughs> it that. sounds like he belongs on the circus. <laughs> I give Pikachu a chance. So. Okay, Phoebe from Friends or Pennywise, the dancing clown from It. Pennywise. Pennywise, cool. Yeah. He said, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you "Can't touch this." Can't touch this. Oh yeah, when the camera goes. Yeah, no, no. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jar Jar Binks uh, or a Porg? Have you seen the new Star Wars movie? A Porg. They're a cute. So cute. They're cute. It. Yeah, they're like I haven't bird. seen it yet. It's like a pug bird. Yeah, Aww. it's like a. It's like I'll um. Take that then. They look kind of like Herbies, except cuter. Furbies. 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 Mm. Furbies. Okay. Like, yeah. Not Herbie. A, Herbie's the guy's <laughs> name. Yeah. Yeah. Can I tell you a little story? Yeah. Sure. Someone, a journalist, the other day said to me, "What's your favorite line out of This Is Me?" And could you write it down? And I said, just one line. I says, I'm, I'm going to write down, and I wrote down, I am who I'm meant to be. I am who I'm meant to be. And she said, I'm going to go and get a tattoo of that. I said, now? She goes, right now. And I'll show it to you tonight. I said, you mean with my handwriting? She said, your handwriting. I said, you're not going to be able to have the worst handwriting. So that line there, I am who I'm meant to be, that night she lifted up my shirt and she had it there with my terrible handwriting. Literally just wrote it. So. Do I have to do that now? You made a t-shirt. Okay. You know, I thought you could have gone to another level. Damn it. I'm just saying. We'll scribble something down later. And then maybe just over the forehead. Yeah, just like. You know, on the tongue. Why not? Something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is um, my, my third time with you this year. I know. It's yeah. great to see you, man. This year we started off uh, February with Logan. That's right. I was 10 years old when the first <laughs> X-Men movie came out, you know? Wow. Yeah, so it's 17 years. We're going to finish the interview right now. Yeah. Thanks for, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> and then in June, we did the music video in That's London. Right. That's right. And then now... Were you happy with it? Yeah! I am brave, I am bruised, I am who I'm meant to be. This is me. Yeah! I thought it was so good. Right? And then now, the release of The Greatest Showman. Yeah. What have you learned this year? Follow your gut. Take risks. And be authentic. Be who you are. You know, 
I mean, this movie is probably closer to who I am, actually, as a person. I mean, a lot of people know me as Wolverine, and mm. anyone who knows me for five minutes, my brother used to joke all the time, like, dude, you were never even in trouble at school, and you're Wolverine, like, you know. Um, but in the end, like, that movie, even Logan to me, was the version of Logan I really wanted. It was very different from all the others. Um, this movie is a movie musical with original music. That hadn't been done in 23 years, but it's just felt right to me. And so I do have a theory of life that you can always sleep peacefully at night, even if something fails, if you follow your gut, if you believe in it. And if it doesn't catch on, you can go, okay, well, maybe I was wrong, or maybe I'm the only one in the world who liked it, but it was right for me. There is a warmth about you. There is a kindness that the journalists feel. Really? Every time they walk back to, because we're all at the cafe, it's like, oh, you oh, know? And it's, very nice. it's giving you that Midas touch, you know? Where does it stem from, that humility? You know, I'm an actor, right? I'm just saying. Are you? I'm pretty good for four you're minutes. You're a diva behind the scene? <laughs> uh, you should ask my kids, basically. Uh, I, I think it's upbringing, probably. And my mom always said to me, no matter who you are or where you go, every single person needs to feel appreciated for what they do. It doesn't matter what job they do. It, people need to feel appreciated. And my dad was a very big boss at the time in an accountancy firm, big accountancy firm. And I only ever saw him be very fair and kind to everyone he worked for. And he used to tell me, people think when you're the boss, everyone serves you, but the truth is you serve them. And I think that, that kind of upbringing that I had, you know, is uh, probably where it comes from. How do you feel when you sing? Now I love it. I think for a long time I used to feel very nervous about it and a bit of a fraud. Like I was an actor first who got into a, a musical, Beauty and the Beast. And by the way, when I was in that musical, my contract had it that I would get a paid singing lesson once a week. I don't think that's ever happened before in the business. But the whole time I felt like everyone's better than me, I'm a fraud, someone's gonna find out. It's only really been the last few years, I think, that I really started to enjoy it. In your opinion, why do you think people make it their mission to put people who are different down? I think they're insecure. I think on some level, most of those bullies, whether it's emotional, verbal, abusive, have suffered that at some point, or they don't like themselves in some way. And it's way easier to put your hate that you actually feel for yourself and put it on someone else. It's, of course, it's cowardly, but on some level, I think, to move forward, you have to understand that with people. You have to understand, and I always look to Nelson Mandela, to me, who's one of the greatest examples of how to move forward after, I mean, look, that guy was put in jail for 27 years, took him away from his family, you know, for a complete injustice, an immoral injustice, and he found a way to forgive and to understand, but ultimately, I think people do it because they're damaged within, and it's, hard to, to look at yourself and to be really honest and truthful about the stuff that you don't like. And what this movie is about is whether you like yourself, parts of yourself or not, own it. Be who you are. And only then are you able to then be generous with other people. I really like the movie and I want everyone to see it. Could you just tell Singapore to go watch The Greatest Showman, please? To everyone in Singapore, while you're eating your kaya toast, which I miss desperately, um, please go and see, this is, uh, this is me, sorry. Please go and see The Greatest Showman and my favorite song in it, This Is Me. Um, and I think you'll find it is uplifting. It will open your heart, it will make you smile, it will make you sing, but ultimately it will make you celebrate humanity in your life. Please go and enjoy. Yay. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. What did you learn? Over I'll give you a two minutes. Hey! Yeah! Um, over a period of seven months, I won 50 cents. Hi, darling! This is. Oh, I love that shirt! My friend got it for me for Christmas. Are you here to interview us? Yeah. Right now? Yeah, I'm really Oh my gosh, get it out! Amazing. Oh my god. Oh my god. Getting into it with Joshua. Okay. Hi, Bert. Okay. Hi. Hi. Oh my god, okay. <laughs>
Okay, yeah, I'll get into it now. You've okay. done it already. This is the second time you've done this. You know yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask, how's it been since? I mean, I've seen your Instagram and stuff. You know, you, you follow everyone, all the dancers. and It's uh, it's humbling. And you're going to make me cry. Oh. It's humbling. Because I just got to do this. And I'm just grateful to do it. And I get to see what you have created and other people have created in the world based on this song. And... Uh, uh, it's nice to not be alone and not feel alone anymore, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good feeling. Yeah. I don't want to make you cry. Well, it's too late. <laughs> You've already done it. We're going to start off fun, okay? Imagine okay, great. this. Tomorrow morning you wake up and you've got a full-on beard. What would you do? I would have to fall to my knees. You just said you weren't going to make me cry. Oh, you lied. Um, I would have to fall to my knees and search really hard inside of me. Uh, to get to the next moment. I've actually had these conversations with uh, a woman who suffers from polycystic ovarian syndrome. We actually message back and forth and she's asked me these questions because I based my performance on her life. The things that make people stronger are those struggles, whether it be a physical thing, whether it be because I'm a plus size person, whether it be because she has a beard, whether it be because of what your nationality is. You look in the mirror, we all look in the mirror mm -hmm. and we find fault with ourselves. And yet those faults are things that other people will, will love. Mm -hmm. And they will love them about you more than you could ever imagine. Yeah. And you kind of, no matter how much you don't like it, you kind of have to get out of your own way and accept that. And rock it. And the yeah, only, and exactly. The, exactly. And, it. and the only way that you can do that is to make sure you have someone else by your side, no matter who it is, to just go, I don't like this. And they'll go, I know you don't, but you're nailing life. Let's go. You're nailing life. Um, Michael, um, so there are a lot of moving parts for this film, uh, the actors, the script, the, the soundtrack. At what point did you get a chance to just step back and go, I think we've got something magical here? <laughs> Like, when was that moment? Because even the marketing's been crazy. Yeah. All the, the wacky ideas. There were genuinely moments on set, uh, and I think it, it is a set that I will never experience again, mm. where, where you have other actors showing up just because someone is performing. Yeah. And they want to cheer them they on. Be there. And for This Is Me, they were, they were standing behind the monitors and they were clapping and shouting. And that is not normal. That is not a normal <laughs> film set. Normally you're like, insert big name star here. Mm -hmm. Can't we get them for another hour? Why can't we get them for another hour? Not like showing up on days when they're not even required just because they want to be there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I think there was a real magic that was happening on set. And as long as there was a camera running, you, you captured that, you know? And it, it, it really, it, it was so evident in moments when you watch on the screen, when you see Hugh's eyes in Come Alive, when you see, you know, Kiala and what she does with This Is Me. Like, there are so many moments that I remember what it was like to stand behind the camera and just feel the electricity of the set. So there's this line that hit me in the film. That's, you say, um, for us, this is home, right? This is our home. Yeah. Where's home for you? I know you've been on the road. I know you've been promoting the film. Uh, where's home for you and have you gone back? How do you ask the greatest questions? Um, home is right here for me because I travel so much. And that was a hard thing for me to accept. Um, I actually talked about that this morning with my cousin who I haven't seen in nine years. And he said, where do you consider home, cousin? And I said, it's right here. And whoever's there, that's home. That's home.